Ah, oh, what is up guys? It is Gasparilla in Tampa. Well, not when you're gonna see this, but that's okay, because we're gonna retime our footage using audio. So all we need to do is grab some audio so we can go back to the future. All right, so this is what we're gonna be making. It has kind of a heartbeat, kind of like trippy vibe to it. See, it moves with the beat. So I'm sure I'm going to see this in somebody's music video soon. Just let me know when you do that. All of these comps share the same basic setup. So that's really what I'm going to explain here. If you need more in-depth information on it, you can check out the project file or you can check out our Patreon tier at $5 and above. You get all of the project files for the month. And there's also some BTS content you can check out. So let's look at how this thing is set up. We have our audio layer, which just contains one audio file. I do this just in case I want to swap them out or whatever makes it easier to swap through every comp. So that audio layer is in every one of these. So I built most of this effect with trap code sound keys, which is really awesome if you want to time things to beats or whatever. But if you don't have that, you can either split out like bass parts in Audition, or you can use effects in After Effects to kind of get an amplitude that works. So in this one, I'm running a high pass filter and then a low pass filter to kind of just select the area of the audio that I want. If you turn these both on, it kind of has this kind of sound. You can hear that the beat is kind of strong, but it's not really like the rest of the song is kind of toned down. These numbers aren't going to work for you. It depends on the song. So you're going to have to mess with these things yourself. But after you're done with that, we just right click on this thing or you can go up to, you know, animation in the top up here. And then it says keyframe assistant. You got to convert audio to keyframes. When you do that, you'll get an audio amplitude layer and then you can turn these back on. Well, turn these back off so you can have the full music. Let's turn that back down. Because now we have our keys and we don't really have to worry about that anymore. So if we open this up, you can see we have left channel, right channel, and both channels as effects. I don't even really use left or right, so I'm actually going to just dump them out. The song isn't really panned one way or the other, so it doesn't really matter. Once you're done with that, I usually hit the graph here and kind of take note of what the highest area is. So in this case, like 10.7. And I try to see where like the mid area, the peak is in here. So I kind of stay above that, so I hit the beats. So somewhere like in this region, maybe like 7.3, 7.5, just so that you're making sure just to hit the high point of a beat. So turn that back off. So then I'm going to go into my expressionist view, which actually I'm not even using the right workbench view anyway. So we have our expressionist here. I'm going to open up this thing, hit EE, bring this up here so it's a little bigger. All right, so you can see we have amp equal to this comp layer amp audio amplitude effect both channels slider. So I just pick whip that guy right into there, give it a variable amp. And then in the next line, uh, that does the entire work right here. So we got ease, and inside of that we have amplitude as it goes from 7 to 8.5. So basically instead of going all the way to 10, I want this to be at the maximum at 8.5. So anything over that will still be at the maximum value here. So it goes from 7 to 8.5. We're going to go from 100 for our speed to negative 400. So this value is in our time warp effect, and that's just on speed. I didn't change anything else in this effect. Although maybe I changed this to speed instead of source frame, but I think it's on speed by default. So obviously at 100 speed, we're going the normal speed of our clip. 200 would be two times as fast. And in our case, negative 400 is negative four times as fast. I can go that fast backwards because we're moving forward far enough before it goes back too far, because it's not staying at that maximum value very long. So most of the time it's at 100, and then it backs off to 400. So in this one, without sound keys, kind of does this. Some of that other stuff from before was like additional layers that were blurring and things, but the main speed, you can see the beat of the cars move back a little bit right on the beat. So that's how they all go. So I did some different things with different tweak settings. This one's basically the same deal, except for we have a value at time in here that moves it back three frames. So it happens a little bit earlier. It's most apparent during this section. So it happens a little earlier. This one's basically the same thing, except for we go faster forward. So we're at 150 and we go back faster at negative 800. 
It starts a little later too at 7.5. So this range is from 7.5 to 8.5. So it's just a little bit more pronounced. There's a beat in there in between a couple of spots where it goes up enough, but it's not really the beat. But you get the idea. So then I did in sound keys. You can see this one actually hits more on the beat because I can be more exact with the uh, keyframes that I'm using. I'm also able to use fall off, so it kind of falls off more gently. So then from there, I started to go a little bit crazier. And if we go into this one, we can bring this guy up into here. You can see we are easing differently. So we're going from 75 to 100, which these are the numbers that, uh, that work for sound keys. So we're gonna go from 150, and in this case, we're gonna then jump to math.sign of time times 10 times 1,000. So this value of math.sign, whatever's in this thing, will give us a range from negative one to one. So then when we multiply it by 1,000, it's negative 1,000 to 1,000. So every time it hits the beat, it could either jump forward or backward or kind of go forward and backward. So it makes it a little bit more randomized and interesting. But this isn't super randomized because if you do that, it can actually look like the footage is just moving in a linear fashion because sometimes the changes are just so drastic that it actually ends up being about in the middle anyway. So let's see what that looks like. So you see it kind of goes backwards sometimes, forwards by a lot sometimes. And it's generally more interesting. So I thought that was pretty cool, but not as cool as this one that's labeled cool. So in this case, we're breaking things out using mats now. So I have just a basic JS Velvet. So we're using JS Placement, but instead of Classic, we're using Velvet. Some of them have this cut out in the middle that's faded. Some of them don't. Depends on how much of the effect I want to be across the entire frame. In this case, the first couple of them, I don't have it going the whole way. I just have the edges doing it. So this one kind of looks like this. Which I actually really like because it kind of shifts differentially. And that's also because I've changed the timing of these things. So in this one, if we bring this into Expressionist. You can see that to that math.sign time times 10 thing, I've added one. So this one's offset by one second, or I guess one second's worth of rotation, technically. But either way, it's just offset a little bit. You can mess with this number to you know, your taste or whatever, but this one is offset by one. And I believe this one is offset by two or 0.5. Yeah, 0.5. So these things are offset differentially. And these things have an extract on them so that only certain parts of the image are actually showing anyway. So these are alpha matted. So whatever this is, you'll see it. I could do a luma mat too. Actually, that could be, could be another way to do it. I thought I was doing it that way when I initially built it that way, but, uh, yeah, you know, I didn't do it that way. So let's try that, see what that looks like. It's more blocky. It's actually kind of cool that way too. It moves a little bit more mechanically, I think, than I initially had it. It's not bad. I'm going to go back to the other way just because I liked kind of how it all moved that way, which is weird because that's not how I intended to do it, but the pieces move enough because this top one is extracted a good bit. So really it's only in these areas, so it kind of gets the same feeling anyway. You can also probably feather those or use like a Gaussian blur on them if you wanted to so that you can actually like, you know, not see the edges so much, but I didn't mind that. So that's that one. And then the other ones that I did, it's mostly just adding like an echo on top of it. And this thing is set to echo 10 times. They're all offset by negative 0.1 seconds. And then they decay to half. This one's set to minimum. The one of the thumbnail is actually set to maximum. I think that's the only difference between that one. But then you get this. So it gets a little bit more trippy. Kind of gives you like a weird blur, like somebody's been drugged or something. And this one also has it just on the edges. The center is fine and the edges move. So like you get everything that kind of stays very stable in the middle and toward the edges, it gets kind of crazy. There's a little bit of it happening in this middle. But that's because the echo is applied to everything on the top. So you're actually getting the echo from this, the movement of the buildings as well. As the whole frame shifts. All the layers move the same amount. It's just that sometimes it might be going backwards on the top layers and forwards on the bottom layers or whatever. So depending on how much the beat moves the footage, you're going to see more of this echo effect as we go along. 
I've also set these layers up to use a similar expression on opacity. So let's take a look at how that works. Let's bring that into our expressionist. So you can see this is almost the same exact thing as the other ones. We just have this one go as our amplitude goes into the beat. We go from zero opacity to 100% opacity. So that's why it's not always visible. And that's pretty much it. I am cutting in vlogger style because Workbench Live is coming at you next month. No, I'm just kidding. We're going to be at the Keyframes Conference in Orlando next month. I'll be speaking. Seth will be hanging out. The panel of people is so insane that I almost want to be watching it rather than doing it. I'm telling you, these, there's, some good, there's some good people in this thing. Anyway, if you guys are anywhere near Orlando next month, make sure to check it out. I got a link in the description below, and you can use Join Me 19 to save some money at checkout. I hope we'll see you there. Oh, there's one other thing I almost forgot. Right now, there are pirates invading this area. So if you can, send help. Thanks. And that's it. I hope you guys like this one. I'm sure I'm going to see this technique in a music video or something somewhere because it's kind of perfect for that. Anyway, if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe because we do one every week. If you'd like to have some more we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench and maybe take a look at that BTS content I was talking about before. Make sure to keep up with the blog at workbench.tv. And as always, I am Joe, and we'll see you next week. Bye.